Snarks, tiny, annoying little things in the first Half-Life, and all but forgotten since. They're often considered one of the least useful parts of Half-Life's diverse arsenal, but is that really true? The answer is probably yes. Snarks appear in all four official Gold Source Half-Life games, and they're more elusive every time. Here's a graph to illustrate it. They first appear in a cage in Half-Life and Opposing Force, above an out-of-the-way vent in Blue Shift, and inside the bloated corpse of a security guard in a swimming pool in Decay, released after dealing 3,000 damage to the body. That's not a joke. They didn't appear in another game until Half-Life Alex, where you can find one in a jar and feed it for an achievement. This one has somehow survived years without exploding, but who cares? What, do you think I'm some kind of nerd? Jeez. Anyway, as usual, we'll be focusing on their appearance in the 20-year-old original Half-Life game. You get five snarks per snark nest you pick up, with a maximum of 15 in reserve. They serve an odd niche in the game, one that isn't relevant for very long and isn't very common. You see, as a weapon in Category 5, their purpose is to be placed or thrown at the enemy. But they don't explode, or at least they don't deal much damage by exploding. The snark's entire purpose is to annoy the hell out of the enemy while chipping away at their health, serving as a distraction or a somewhat effective weapon in small spaces when the player isn't nearby and the enemies are mostly human. They're picky little bastards. They don't chase bull squids, alien grunts, vortigaunts, or alien controllers, making them almost entirely useless for the last quarter of of the game. They'll ignore security guards and opposing force too, and that certainly wasn't the last alien that Gearbox broke. They deal damage by contact, so they can hit these enemies, but it's just not going to be effective. Surface tension happens to have plenty of spots where players stand above soldiers, so they can be useful there, but that's really about it. They were pretty good in the Lambda Assassin fight though, so that's something. And they can be used for plenty of glitches and exploits, but is that enough to redeem them? No. Even their introduction is botched. While most weapons are given to the player right before a great spot to use them, the snarks appear almost a full chapter before they're really helpful. As a weapon, these things are pretty much a toy, fun to mess around with, but not very useful. I just think they're hot. Where they shine, though, is literally everywhere else. They serve a very important purpose in further tying gameplay to the world and storyline. The living, breathing world is very important to Half-Life's design, and having the player pick up an alien enemy and throw it at people adds layers to the illusion of realism. It's like how in this scene in The Thing, they have Kurt Russell hold this petri dish at a very specific angle, so when they cut to the puppet hand, it looks more believable. We'll do you last. Actually, it's nothing like that. Just just cut cut this part. Gordon might like snarks, but they don't like him. They're encountered as enemies just as often as pickups, and they'll always attack you if there isn't a better target. The first map of Forget About Freeman has them serve the same purpose as trip mines. Trip mines that spill bitey little hellspawn that burst at the seams. Pinatas from hell contained within Pinatas from hell, it's genius. The invasion of alien fauna, growing hostile organisms to attack the player was first explored with snarks and barnacles, before becoming a major plot element in Alex. And is it any coincidence, by the way, that Alex begins with a snark? I don't think so. Again, it's like poetry, so sort if of they rhyme. But the themes of Half-Life deserves its own video. We're talking about snarks. Let's see here. Um, uh, they look different in the HD pack, and Valve adopted a few elements of the design for Alex. But they dropped this weird mustard stain, thankfully. The HD nests look completely different, like something out of a different game. It's really, really gross. And I guess that's it? Anything else to say? Ah, oh, fuck it, let's move on. Play the beta thing. No, no, the other one. Yeah, th there you go. Oddly enough, the behind-the-scenes history of the Snarks is far more interesting than any of their finished appearances. One concept that arose early in Half-Life's development was friendly aliens that would accompany the player, with the most famous examples being the Fast Walker and the Hound Eye. The former doesn't seem to have gotten past the concept stage, and the latter became an enemy because playtesters wouldn't let it live for long enough to help out. Another incarnation, and seemingly direct precursor to the Snarks, was the Chum Toad. Unlike Snarks, this little guy was meant to serve as bait, distracting enemies from the player, hence the name Chum Toad. It has tons of animations for jumping, swimming, and all kinds of funny little things. Various promotional materials that might or might not have been written by Valve talk about how the Toads were low on the food chain, something alien grunts subsisted on almost entirely, and were thus teleported to Earth before their arrival so they could breed and provide a food source for the invasion. In the end, the whole baiting system was never finished, so the Toads were cut. But not for long, because they're all over the Gearbox games as Easter eggs. They even get their own lair. And beyond Randy's greasy, sweaty grasp, the modding community has an affinity for the purple frogs as well. Usually they're an easter egg or a snark reskin, but a few projects have gone the extra mile and revived their old purpose, or even created a new one altogether. 
Isn't it funny that people love these unfinished blobs so much more than the Snarks? Seems like Valve did too, because the Snarks were never given such lofty ideals. The original name was the Squeak Grenade, and they lived up to that name. It seems like they would have been similar to the final product with a much more deadly explosion. Chuck Jones, their designer, points out its stupid look, fat, explosive booty, and imagines it exclaiming, I bite. And there's a Miss Pac-Man looking one over here, and a cluster bomb, and they would have bit the player in the hand and turned on them, and okay, maybe there was a bit more to this thing. It's a living grenade with a lot of personality. Oh, also, the Nest and the Snark have a few unused animations, and yeah, that's about it for Half-Life 1. Oh, also, in Opposing Forces multiplayer, they have like these little penguins with grenades on their backs that run around. They work more like the Snarks in, in Chuck Jones' drawing, and I, and I forgot about that until I was recording this script, so, so there it is. <laughs> While Snarks themselves didn't crop up again until Alex, it seems that Valve never quite let go of the concept. A cut Half-Life 2 weapon called the Brickbat would have allowed the player to lob all sorts of strange things at their enemies, including headcrabs. It was pretty much just a janky gravity gun, so I can see why it didn't make the cut. However, friendly aliens were realized in the final game with the bug bait, allowing Gordon to command a squad of ants. There were also some plans to give Alex a friendly alien, but that seems to have been replaced with Dog in the final product. Oh, and in episode 2 you get a Vortigaunt friend, so I guess that's kinda close. I don't know. The closest real Snarks ever got to appearing in a Source Engine game was their use as a placeholder visual for some weird blob thing that would have attached itself to enemies. And then, a full 13 years later, we got Half-Life Alex, and there sure is a Snark in it. Like I said earlier, you can feed it for an achievement. However, there are quite a few unused animations, some mentioning specific lab scenes that imply a larger or even active role in the game. I like to think it would have been a bit like Lamar. In the end, though, our favorite four-legged insect was banished to the jar forever. And thank god Randy isn't around anymore, or the Snark's glass prison might have been decidedly more gooey. And on that note, that's all there is to say about Snarks. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments, or on my brand new super cool Discord server linked in the description. And thank you very much for watching. I will see you up ahead.